Thank you so much, Lisa. I appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this presentation. Um, as Lisa said, my name is Simon Ringsmith and i um, with uh, Oklahoma State University. And today we're going to talk about a project that my colleagues and I have been working on for the past about nine months or so. Um, I'm really excited to share this process with you, uh, partly to show you what we've created, but really the, the goal of this session is to help uh, to share with you the process, not the results necessarily, but the process that we use so that you can take some of what we talk about here back to your institution and get similar results. If you're working with a team and and there's a, a some goals you're trying to accomplish or maybe a project you're working on and you think, man, it's just not working. Like how, how can we make this process work better? Um, that's my goal here is to, to explain how we made uh, what we made and uh, give you some ideas to take back for your institution. Now, the, the project that I'm gonna talk about is designing targeted video trainings, but it's it's a, a process that works for a lot of different types of, of deliverables. I also wanna encourage you to uh, share your thoughts in the chat, uh, unmute yourself if you just wanna talk. I prefer that questions just come in as we go. Uh, and if anything comes in, Lisa's going to interrupt me. And and uh, I, I really like that dynamic element rather than saving everything to the end. So I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on all this. And if you've got a perspective to share, if there's something you've tried, let's get that out here so we can share ideas and, and really um, uh, help everyone out here. So here's our agenda. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We only have 25 minutes. So we're going to talk about uh, a, a software program that we use at Oklahoma State University and the need for training on that software. Um, then I'm going to share with you with the requirements and the parameters that we discussed for these trainings. But after that comes the real meat of the presentation. It's, it's actually two slides, <laughs> the real meat of this, but that's where I want to um, really dive in with you all. Um, I want to share with you the workflow that we use to create these trainings. And uh, that workflow is based entirely in collaboration. Finally, I'm going to share results so you can see for yourselves just what we've come up with. So first, I want to talk about the software that I mentioned and the need for training. And again, the purpose of this is not to say if you use this software, here's what you can do, but really the process that we use. So no matter what software you use or no matter what tool you use, if you want to design some, uh, in this case, targeted video trainings, this is a process that's worked pretty well for us and uh, should work pretty well for you. Um, the software that we're talking about here is called Experts Directory, and I encourage you to check this out. Uh, you can go to experts.okstate.edu, pull up a new tab in your browser. You can do that right now if you want. Um, it's, uh, it's a program that allows researchers to share and showcase their work. It has a place for publications, research, uh, creative projects, grants. Thanks, Lisa. Lisa put it in the chat. I appreciate that. Um, it's this software experts directory is kind of like LinkedIn, uh, but it's for academics and it's really designed to help people make connections with other researchers at OSU and peer institutions. And so the more people at OSU who use this software, the more effective it ends up being. If uh, only 10% of our faculty are using this software, then it doesn't have the same impact that it does if 90 or 100% of our faculty <laughs> use this software because the more people that use this, the more connected everyone is and the more people can collaborate with each other as they're uh, looking for research partners and looking for projects to work on. This experts directory software is really powerful uh, and it's super useful, but not everyone knows how to use it. And not everyone even knows it exists. So we got some barriers here. And my colleagues and I are working to change that with our targeted training videos. So if you have a learning management system like Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, anything like that, and you want to increase adoption and you want to just get some materials out there, in this case, some training videos, that's where this process might come in handy for you. So this is primarily a collaboration between three people, myself, uh, Matt Upson, you can see here, he's the Associate Dean for Research and Learning Services. Clark Ikavakis, uh, he is the Scholarly Services Librarian. And also Nina Thornton, she's the multimedia producer or one of the multimedia producers at the library. And the three, well, I guess the three people here, the four of us together collaborate to make the results that you're going to see. So in the summer of 2022, 
um, I guess about nine months ago, Clark, Matt, and I met to talk about the need for experts directory training. Our goal was to increase adoption of the platform and help people use it more. And the primary barrier was that the software was a bit opaque. Um, when you log in, it's not difficult to use necessarily, but it feels overwhelming because there's so many options and parameters that you have available. So if someone wants to start building up their profile in Experts Directory, kind of like if you log into Canvas or Blackboard, and you want to start building out your class, it, it can seem overwhelming. There's just too much. Where do you even start? Uh, so we thought of, like, how are we going to address this? Do we do webinars? Uh, do we do one-to-one -one trainings? Uh, do we do text-based documents, step-by-step -step PDFs that could be sent out? And we, we really had this goal in mind to increase faculty adoption of the program and help people use it effectively. And we started from that goal and then worked backwards. And we decided that each of these options, uh, webinars, one-to-one -one trainings, uh, PDFs, that they... They had advantages, but they also had significant downsides too. So we thought about, well, let's do webinars to uh, help people use Experts Directory. Well, in, in our experience, having done a lot of these webinars, uh, you don't get a lot of attendance. Um, even if you record them, people watch them later, uh, they, it, they don't work for the type of uh, increased adoption that we were really hoping for. One-to-one um, -one trainings, they're not really scalable because we have we don't have enough resources to do one-to-one -one trainings with every faculty on campus. And PDFs, they work fine as well, but we haven't traditionally seen the level of engagement with emailing out PDFs and emailing out websites that uh, we might want for the goals of what we were trying to do. So what we decided to do eventually was to create an archive of short targeted video tutorials. This is actually based on a similar series of videos that I created when I was instructional designer at OSU's Institute for Teaching and Learning Excellence, except that process, which I did for years, was not collaborative in nature. And this process that we're using here that I'm talking about today is collaborative in nature, and the results are phenomenal. We're really pleased with them. Um, the What we decided to do is make short targeted trainings that address the immediate needs of faculty. Um, faculty can decide their engagement level if they want to watch one Three minute video, that's fine. If they want to watch 10 videos, that's fine. But faculty can decide their level of engagement. It's on demand instruction. So faculty can get help immediately, right when they need it. And they can get specific help with what they need, not an hour long webinar where they're trying to figure out what part of this is relevant to my needs. They can click in a specific video and get exactly what they need. So once we decided on these parameters, then, uh, or once we decided on these methods, on the method for training faculty and one to one, or uh, Sorry, once we decided on this method of short targeted trainings, we then had to create some requirements and parameters for what we were gonna do. Again, because we all wanted to be on the same page. We didn't wanna to get to a situation where I was doing one thing, Clark was doing one thing, and Matt was expecting another thing. We all had to be on the same page throughout this whole process. So we wanted some requirements that we all could agree on. With our collaborative approach, communication has been a key element of success. We have to make sure everyone's on the same page. So we set these requirements and we wanna make sure that these expectations were set at the very beginning, not halfway into the development of these, but right at the start. And then that we consistently meet these as we're developing these videos and revisit them too. If it turns out that the requirements need to change, then we'll do that. But we have to continually collaborate on all this and not just um, have one person doing something and another person doing something. Um, it really was steeped in this element of collaboration. So here's our, our parameters for what we wanted to do. We want short targeted videos, and each video had some parameters, one topic per video, short and specific. We didn't set a time limit, but our goal is around three to five minutes per video because we know and research tells us that uh, people generally don't engage with videos that are longer than about five to six minutes and often even shorter. Someone sends you a video and says, hey, you got to check out this video. I, I, uh, I think you really like it. If it's 15, 20, 30 minutes long. You're, you're not likely to engage with it. And that's what research tells us as well. And that research has been done on, uh, there's been a lot of research been done on uh, student engagement with videos. And we see that students don't engage with long videos. And we're applying that same logic or that's that same conclusion to faculty as well, where faculty are going to engage more with a shorter video than with a longer video. Uh, we wanted our videos to be scripted, and that was a big change. Um, 
the idea that we'd write scripts beforehand and record it's, it, word for word what was on those scripts, but there is a specific reason for that, and I'll get to that in a second. We need our videos to be captioned. We wanted to have the instructor visible in the videos, um, and we wanted to share these on YouTube so that they would benefit not just our faculty, but anyone else in the world who might need training on this software. Um, in addition, we also set regular meetings uh, to ensure good communication. I'll talk about those meetings in a minute too. As far as the technical requirements, not much. Anybody can do this. Um, we used off the shelf hardware and software. Um, these were my own personal requirements because I was gonna be the one, the one recording and editing the videos, but you might have different requirements. The point is we didn't spend 20, $30,000 on fancy hardware. Um, we use simple, basic stuff that anyone can use. Um, I, a MacBook Pro uh, is what I use to record and edit the videos. Uh, a lapel mic, like a $50 USB lapel mic. I uh, We bought an a external solid state drive to store all the videos. And then software like Camtasia, um, we've got a green screen, but that's down in the, we call it the Creative Studios presentation room on First Floor Library. There is a green screen recording room set up that we're borrowing every time we need to make a video. And then a podium and a mouse, just basic stuff like that. Um, you can get similar results with, that, with other technology. Um, and I'm only sharing in case uh, others are curious what we did. Most of this is off the shelf hardware and software that anyone can purchase. So now let's talk about the collaborative workflow. Um, my goal here is to help you see what we did so that you can learn from our experience if you're doing similar projects. However, I welcome any input you have on the process. Uh, we can learn from you. And if there's things that you're doing, I wanna hear it so we can make our, uh, our process a little better. Please ask questions if you have them, either unmute yourself or type them in the chat or use the Q&A and uh, be glad to hear anything that you have to say or questions you have as we go. This is the step-by-step -step <laughs> process that we use to create the videos. Um, it all starts with a needs assessment. Um, what training videos should we focus on? The software is huge, so what, what uh, needs do we have that we need to meet first and how do we prioritize those needs? Um, what training videos should we focus on? And the uh, the uh, uh, metaphor here is uh, an elephant. And how do we eat an elephant? It's so big. Well, we eat it one bite at a time. Um, experts directory is huge, so we break it down into small chunks, and we just do one video at a time. And over time, we're going to cover as much as we can. Uh, Chris asked a question: If doing a lot of recordings, I'm recording. I would encourage getting a good mic with a pop filter. I like the Blue Yetis. Yeah, I agree. In fact, I've got a Blue Yeti in this room somewhere. I, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Blue Yetis. I got one at work. Um, uh, the lapel mic works great. It's got a little windscreen on it. But yeah, the, the pop filter is really essential so that you don't get the that burst of, of sound anytime someone says a hard consonant. Um, so after we perform a needs assessment and we figure out where do we need to focus our videos, what are the greatest needs uh, for training, then we write a script. And usually that's me going through step by step and figuring out what as we're recording the video, what do I say word for word? Uh, I send that script then to Matt and Clark, who you saw on the previous slides. And I say, here's the script for the video for this, uh, this the video that we're on right now. What do you think? Then they give me their feedback. They'll either write it in comments in the Word document or we'll revise the script together. After we have the script hashed out, then I'll take care of recording the video itself. I'll do a screen recording and a screen capture video. And then I send a draft of the video to Matt and Clark. And so you can see there's this back and forth. This isn't just one person uh, doing all the work and then coming back and saying, here's the video. This is collaborative and it's continual. The, the script is written by one person, but then it's edited collaboratively. Um, the video is recorded, but then other people give feedback on it. So there's this constant back and forth and it results in a better product overall. Then after we're all on the same page with the video, um, we, uh, uh, I'll create an SRT file, a caption file, and then send that off to Nina in communications, and then she'll get it posted to YouTube. The thread that weaves throughout all of this, which ties the whole process together, is good communication. We couldn't accomplish all this without our regular meetings. And our, our meetings are really a key that they're, they're the glue that holds all this together. Even if we don't have anything specific on the agenda, we still meet. And I, I've got a slide here where I'm going to show you like a picture of our meeting. Um, 
In fact, I'll just skip to that now. Uh, this is a picture of me and Clark. This is last week during our meeting. Um, we, uh, we've set a standing meeting every week, uh, Wednesday at 1130 AM. We meet either in person or on Zoom. And we talk about whatever we need to. We'll talk about uh, that the script that we're working on. We'll talk about revisions to the video. Sometimes we'll pull up the script on the TV in the room. And we'll kind of go through the script together. And the script is really important. We tried a couple of videos where it was unscripted, where we agreed on a topic, and then I went and made a recording, and it, it just it didn't quite work because I would insert things in the video as I'm recording, as I'm using the the software and making a demonstration of the software. I would insert things that would happen on the fly, and then maybe that's not the best way to say it. Maybe there's a better way to say it. Um, even though writing a script for each video slowed things down a little bit, it actually results in a better overall product. And so if you're working on training videos, I highly recommend having a script to go off of so that you get everything exactly right, exactly how you need to. And as you're as you're going over the script together, you can hash out the wording so it the, the video covers exactly what you want it to. Um, in this particular meeting, um, we were going over a video about uh, ORCID, which is the Open Researcher and Contributor ID, a, a video that we're working on. Um, and uh, what we did here, we met a couple weeks ago. We talked about these ideas. I left to write a script. And then I revised the script. Uh, we went over it again during our meeting. We revised it again. And uh, we left with some uh, action items for me to, to uh, further revise the script. And then I actually couldn't do it. Like I was sitting at my computer and it just wasn't working. And um, and then we, uh, uh, we, I, I went back to Clark and I messaged him on teams. And I said, Clark, I, I just can't quite get this right. Uh, can we, can we figure this out together? So we went back to the script and we're going through it line by line. And we realized, oh, okay, well, here's the issue and let's focus on this instead. And it's, it's that collaborative process, that regular process. That's really been the key to success for all this. Um, okay. A couple questions. Laura, uh, this is so cool. Watching videos easy and can be done. Yes, I agree. Thank you, Laura. Um, Chris, why an SRT versus a VTT file? Aren't VTT files better for closed captioning? As I understand it, Chris, the SRT files are, are used by YouTube. Um, that was requested by Nina, the communications, uh, the multimedia producer in communications. She requested an SRT file. So I'm not sure why SRT versus VTT. There might be a reason um, that I'm not aware of to do SRT. Um, but when I edit the, the captions in Camtasia and hit the export button uh, where it's um, there's an export for captioning, it exports as an SRT. So I think that might also be one reason. Um, and then, Christina, can you share how you did the needs assessment? Uh, curious what that went, what went into that and how it helped. So let me go back to that early stage. Um, of the process. Really, that was mostly just a conversation at the start um, where it was last summer and we're in the conference room and we just uh, we really want to figure out um, what uh, what training should we focus on? I we didn't actually collect a lot of data in terms of going around, like surveying people and figuring out where the where the pain points and all this. Um, but Clark has a lot of experience with experts directory. And so we kind of used or Clark and Matt both. Um, and so we we built on their knowledge and experience with Experts Directory and trying to show people and trying to teach people how to use it. And um, from there, we decided, OK, well, these are these are the biggest issues right now that we're facing. Let's focus on those first. We didn't actually use a formal process. It was really more of a conversation. Um, so I, I hope that helps. <laughs> um, Here's an example of the editing. Uh, this is uh, my editing uh, interface in Camtasia. It looks a little, um, if you've never looked, uh, used Camtasia, it looks a little complicated, but it's actually not that bad. We're just looking at several different um, tracks here of both video and uh, annotations on screen. And um, yeah, Chris, Pack, uh, Chris said Camtasia has great education rates too. I am continually like shocked at how useful Camtasia is. I've been using it for probably 12 years and it, it just keeps getting better and better. Um, you'll notice I'm, uh, what I do here is I'm actually, I'm holding my mouse like this 
when I record the video, I actually go down to the studio, the green screen studio, and I pull up Microsoft Word and I, I make the, the Word file really large, like size 18 point font. I make the margins really big. So all the text in Microsoft Word is like in the middle of the page. And I click record and I just record myself reading the script, literally reading it. I don't have a prompter. Instead, I just set my MacBook down and I record while I stare at Word and I use my mouse, I do this to scroll through the document. Rather than having a prompter automate the scrolling of the, of the text, I scroll through it manually. And so that's why you can see the mouse in my hand. I'm actually scrolling the prompter as it were, the Microsoft Word file as I record. Then I take that file and I play that file as I record separately the screen capture demonstration. So I record me reading the script, then I go back to my uh, my desktop and I use that recording of me reading the script to walk through everything on screen. And it's all done using off the shelf software and hardware. There's nothing complicated or expensive about this. Um, so far we've done 18 videos in, uh, about six to seven months or so. Um, I've got a link to the videos here and you could just see them for yourself. There, that should be able to be the clickable link. I was gonna play one for you, but we're really short on time. And so I encourage you to just click on those. The, the, the ones that are closer to the top are the earlier ones that we did. They're not as polished and refined. The ones at the bottom are a little more refined. Um, there's a couple caveats to this. Number one, we don't yet have data on video effectiveness. So Clark and I are beginning to, uh, we're planning to gather data on this, but it won't be soon. Um, we're trying to fill some vacancies in the department. Um, I don't know when we'll be able to gather data on effectiveness. What we'd like to do is um, have uh, uh, get a couple volunteers to, uh, to walk through some of these uh, training videos and help us understand if they actually are as effective as we think they are, um, and maybe what we could do a little bit uh, differently and, and how we could refine and revise things. Um, hopefully we'll have time to get to that, but right now we're just recording the videos and we're using a model that has been quite successful in other contexts. So uh, we're not going off of no data, no experience at all. This, this idea of short targeted videos, um, that is supported by research and that's supported by experience, but we would like to gather some, own some of our own data on our particular videos just to have that in our back pocket. Um, some lessons learned from all of this. Um, collaboration is essential and uh, communication is the glue. So uh, if you're making videos if um, or if you're designing trainings in the form of videos, yes, you can do it by yourself. Um, and that's certainly, um, it's perfectly valid to do that. But what we've found is that collaboration actually uh, has generally raised the quality of the end result. And that might not be the same as, as um, what uh, we've done here with uh, me and Clark and, and Matt and Nina, but the more input you can get on whatever you're designing and, and creating, the better it's going to be. And then if you're a collaborator, make sure to communicate often, have a clear vision for what you want to do and identify specific needs, and then create a workflow that's sustainable. Um, refine or revisit that workflow, revisit the processes and the outputs, refine as needed, and then revise and fix things when you need to. And be open to feedback. If someone says, you know, this isn't working, well, let's talk about that and adjust it. And, and know that all of you are on the same, you're trying to do the same thing. And if someone has a different opinion, that's great. Let's get that opinion in there and we'll talk about it and we'll, uh, we'll make an even better product as a result. Uh, if something isn't working, talk about it. Don't just let it go. Uh, the team will suffer and so will the results. So uh, I want to take a, a couple minutes for any questions, comments that you have. Um, if there's anything else, any questions that you have to share, any ideas that you have to share, anything that you do at your institution that uh, you think others could benefit from, we'll just take a minute and share anything that you feel like sharing. Clark was going to be on this presentation. Um, he's a very busy guy. There's uh, there's a, been an open position in his department for quite some time. So he thought he could make it, but he wasn't quite sure. So um, he wasn't he wasn't able to make it here. 
Uh, good question, Kathy. What do you use to storyboard? We actually don't storyboard. Um, we just sort of plan out what we want to do for each video. And um, it's really more of a conversation than a storyboard. Uh, but that's a good idea. Maybe we could try a storyboard and see if that would help us meet some of the goals for what we're doing with our videos. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate you being here. Um, if you have any questions beyond this, please uh, feel free to email me. My email's on the screen. I'll type it in the box here in the chat. And thank you very much. Thank you, Simon, so much. Whenever you you're ready to end the session, just you'll leave meeting in the meeting for all. Okay, I'm going to click stop share. And um, I guess I'll go ahead and click the end button. Is that okay then? Yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate right. it. It's been a great session. Thank you.